Hello. In tonight's video, we're going to be going over getting data from a database and validating that you actually got data from a database. I have uh, four different types of database adapters here. The first one is a select count. And often when I do PL SQL functions or procedures and I'm grabbing data, um, I often do a select count on the data to verify that uh, what I'm getting actually exists. The reason being that in PL SQL, if you do a select into statement and there's no data, you may raise an error. And it's better to count that the data exists before you do that select into statement. And then you can do something otherwise uh, if the data does not exist. And the same idea is here is, is you don't want to grab data that doesn't exist. I mean, if, if you're validating some or getting some order from somebody and you want to get the wrong order number, then obviously you're not going to be able to run the rest of your processes. So um, it's a good practice to actually check that you actually got data. Now, I have put a select count in here um, so we can see. And the idea is that it's just a select count where the order ID equals something. Very simple um, and not very worthwhile query, frankly. If we look at the data here, you can see that the order ID is this. Um, and this one is actually fulfilled. Um, but you'd probably want to see you know, what's open. So I did not base my query also on the status, which probably would be uh, more intelligible. But for the sake of um, demonstration, uh, we'll see how this works. Now, this is a select count. This is just a pure select where I'm saying, hey, get me the data. And then in this case, the order ID. And um, down here, I have two functions. Um, and these functions basically do the same thing. One is a uh, function that um, gets the count right here and I do select count and I return it. Now the other thing is is um, I don't really need to but when no data found um, if there's if this is wrong if this is a 25 and there's no database uh, order number 25 then it's just going to return a zero. So the no, no data found is really not going to happen too frequently. However, you could plug in a value error. Um, maybe you plug in a, uh, a letter or a word instead of a number, in which case you would get to win others re uh, exception raised, in which case I'm um, putting in a, a, a negative one. OK, and I don't think I'll be allowed to actually test this with a negative, you know, with a word or anything like that in um, in the, the web service tester uh, that Enterprise Manager offers, um, because it'll probably validate that this is a number. But um, that is something to consider, is how do you grab errors that are generated from the database and then process them in SOA. So there's a lot of things to consider as far as data goes. Now let's take a look at my design here. I have the assigned inputs. I uh, first uh, invoke the select count and then I do a um, check on those values. So here you can see uh, that I am uh, this is already a count so I'm making a count of this um, so there's no reason to make it a count. Um, the order exists is a little bit more intelligible. intelligible. The, this is just saying hey it's not equal to zero. OK, so that one uh, is there. And then we invoke the select. Now, this is selecting the order ID. There's no validation on it. Um, it's just going out and selecting the order ID. And here, I'm going to say, hey, give me the count. So you can say if the count is 0, which means there was no data, um, or here, I'm just saying, hey, it's not equal to empty, um, the single quotes having being no value. OK, so we have that. And it's pretty much the same down the line. This is doing the select count um, from the function. 
And again, we're doing a, um, you know, validating it so that we can say, hey, what is the count? Or, um, and the count is not equal to zero. Okay, and then down here, uh, we are doing the final. This is just doing the select into from the function, but it is a function calling. And um, this one, we're saying, hey, it's not equal to zero. And this one, we're saying, hey, it's not equal to empty or null, being a database man. All right, so let's um, see how this works. We're going to deploy this. It's already deployed, but do it again. Another thing I'd like to mention is, is when you do a database function in a database adapter, you get a uh, Bethel uh, function created or a package created that has uh, a wrapper, a, you know, wrappers around what you've designed. And um, also here are some SQL statements that are added, uh, which um, you can then use to create uh, that function. There's also a type created. Um, but if you're porting this to another server, you'd probably want to run these before, especially this one, not the drop. You'd want to run this one uh, so that you can move it over there and have it run properly. Okay, this is deployed. Let's go over here and test it. We are testing it with data two. Okay, now this is the second order. It's already been fulfilled. Um, so there's uh, kind of a simplistic query at that at best, but um, we'll see that it works. I guess the real test will be when we put in dummy data. And you can see that it ran. So here's the invoke. And um, we put in the order ID and we got a count of one. And that's just the select count. This one uh, we put in, we got an order count of one. And uh, this is the assign, which is basically doing, doing the validation. And we can see that it's true. So there was an order. Uh, this is the invoke of the select. And uh, we put in a two and we got out a two, which um, actually doesn't make any sense. But OK, and then we're, we got an order of one and the Boolean true. Here is the uh, sign for the function or the data and uh, we put in an order of two and we got out an output parameter of one which means yes there was an order that's a count of the number of orders and uh, here you can see that we have the booleans of true. Now here you can see that the um, order count is true and boolean true. So um, in other words, you don't really need to do a, a select count because you can validate what you did with the select order ID into um, P PL SQL statement. And you can either do it through a function. Um, and the, the interesting thing about this is, is that uh, we got three pieces of information back. If we take a look at the um, function that I created, get order, you can see that it is taking the cust ID, the order ID, and the status, and putting it into an L order. And the L order is basically just a type created in the package um, that has these three pieces of information in it. It's basically, uh, type is basically an object if you were to compare it to Java. And returning that order. Um, Okay, so now we're going to do a quick test of what it looks like when it is not a real number in the database. So we're going to put in 25 is the order number and see what we get. Okay, I, I ran it. Uh, this is getting long. So uh, the basically uh, with order 25, the, um, here there's a count of zero. Here's the payload, which is order 25. Get a selective count and the... the Basically, the, the value is null, or false, I should say. Um, again, for the, here's the select, the payload. We don't get anything back. 
because there's no data. And the validations on that, there's a count of zero and the Boolean is false, which means there's no data. And again, for the function, um, remember that my uh, database function returned no records found here, zero, zero, zero. So uh, if you had some uh, some switches perhaps or if statements in the uh, SOA, you could then process this accordingly. Um, we're going to have a true uh, order count is true. That well, I'll have to take a look at that and see if there's anything funky about that. Boolean is true. Order exists. Well, the order exists because we did populate it with something. So. There was some logic issues there because um, when we got the no data in the procedure, what did we do? Well, we populated it with data and then we tested it to see if it was data. And so um, I guess the logic of the test was inaccurate. But you can see that those are issues that you'll have to deal with when you're designing a program so that if you get new data, you don't count for it later and have it falsely show up as true. <laughs> so something to live and learn by and something that you need to know about when you design your application so that uh, the errors are minimal. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Have a good day.